Hey everybody, this is Troy with eBuzz Central. Today we're taking a look at Redcore Linux Polaris 2102. It was released a couple days ago. It's a Linux distribution with the KDE desktop environment based on Gentoo. But before we get started, please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, follow my channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like this video and like what the channel's doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Those links are in the description below. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to zip on over to Redcore's website. And as you can see right here, 10-20-2021 Redcore Linux Hardened 2102 Polaris came out. It's the stable version. And then you can go over to the homepage. And it just states right here, Redcore Linux is a distribution based on Gentoo. Stable. Plus, it does have some unstable. It is a continuation of the now defunct Kogion Linux. Kogion Linux itself was a distribution based initially on Sabian Linux and later on Gentoo. Why did they do this? Redcore Linux shares the same idea as the defunct ancestor Kogion Linux to bring the power of Gentoo Linux to the masses. Basically, what Redcore's whole philosophy is, is it wants to be the Manjaro to Gentoo. Manjaro makes it easy for people to come in and start using Arch. Redcore wants to do that for people that want to use Gentoo. Its main target is for casual laptop and desktop users and some workstation power users. And it's built from Gentoo Linux Stage 3. Then they add the kernel, the bootloader, Drake Open OpenRC, all that good stuff. But if you're interested in it, you can go to redcorelinux.org. I'll be sure to include that link down below in the comments. And if you do download it, remember to keep the website on top of your list because it's got home news, downloads, contact, lets you know what the bugs are, your Git, your Wiki, your Donate. You can get a lot of help over here at this website. So having said that, I'm going to go ahead and close out of the browser now, and we can take a look at the desktop. Now, if you download Redcore, throw it on a USB, or open it up in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. You don't have a welcome screen. If you're used to that, you're not going to have that here, and you might want to read up on it. If you're a novice to Linux, I would probably stay away from this distribution, but if you're intermediate, I think you'll be quite comfortable with it. And as you can see, it is KDE. So the first thing I want to do is right click on the desktop, configure desktop and wallpaper. Let's go ahead and check that out. Okay, it's loaded up. And as you can see, you've got your red core wallpaper right here, which is what we're using right now. And then the rest of these are just standard KDE wallpapers. Let's see if we can just pick one so we can change it to change. Let's pick that one right there and apply. And as you can see, you've got a nice, beautiful background. I'm going to go ahead and leave red core up, change it back, and let's go ahead and close out of that. Being that it is KDE, you've got one single panel on the bottom. If you come over here, you've got date and time. If you go right here, you've got your hidden icons. You've got notifications, updates, clipboard, night color control, lock key status, Bluetooth, battery and brightness, and vaults. Let's close that. Then you've got internet, USB, and then volume. Now, if you want to make changes to your panel, let's say you wanted to make it a little bigger, just right click on the panel, click edit panel. This will pop up. You can just go right here and you can make it a little bigger. I'll leave it right there at 40. Now, you do have more options over here. If you click on that, you've got panel alignment. You can align it to the left, center, or to the right. Visibility, always visible. Auto hide, windows can cover, windows can go below. I'm sure you all know what that means. Auto hide, when you open a window, it hides. Or windows can cover. When you open a window, it just covers the bar up completely. And then, of course, opacity on the panel. You can have adaptive, opaque, or translucent. If you come all the way to the left, you can add widgets. When the widgets load up, you've got everything from activities all the way down to window list, weather report. If there's widgets that you want that aren't in here, you can go up here to get new widgets, and you can download new widgets. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use the widgets. If you just go to weather report, click on it, drag and drop. It'll show up on your desktop. Just click on configure. Go up here and click choose. I'm going to go ahead and click NOAA and then Dallas. It brings up Dallas Love Field. I'm going to select it and apply. And as you can see, I now have a weather widget over here with Dallas's weather info. I can close this out. And you have a weather widget on your desktop. Now, let's say you got it there, you change your mind, you don't want it there anymore. Just go over, right click, remove. The weather widget is gone. It's that simple. Now we go over here, what's pinned to the taskbar? We've got system settings, discover software center, and of course, a dolphin. Let's go ahead and open up dolphin. When dolphin opens up, I truly love the theming here. I like the color of the folders, I like the pictures on the folders. And dolphin, as you know, is just a 
light, quick, fast file manager that lets you get your work done. Now, I do dislike some of the things that they have listed over here, but that's the beauty of Linux. You can always modify it or change it. Like recents, I've never wanted recents there. You may want it there, but me, in my opinion, I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and just right click on the word recent, click hide, search for. I'm going to click hide, and then I'll leave everything else there. Another thing that I like is to have these a little bigger. I'm going to right click in this open area. Go to icon size. It's set on medium. I'm going to go ahead and set it to large. And there you go. It's easy to adjust it. And then you've got your usual suspects over here. And then up here, you've got your home folders. Now, if you want to make them bigger or smaller, all you have to do is come down here to the slider. And you can make them bigger, smaller. You can do whatever you want with them. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Now to the Discover Software Center. Okay, Discover Software Center has opened up, and for some reason, it's not able to load my applications because it's saying I don't have internet connectivity, which I do. I'm on Ethernet in the virtual machine, and I'm actually running GNOME boxes, so I don't know why that's showing that, but most of you are familiar with software managers. This is Discover Software Manager. All you'd have to do is once you load it up and updated, you could come up here and do a search for whatever you wanted to. And it would load up over here. You just click it, install. It'll give you a breakdown of the dependencies that are required for that application. Click install on those and you'd be good to go and ready to go. Now you could also, if you just wanted to pick applications, go down to multimedia, video players, and then you could pick out software that way. It would give you a full list of video players. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Okay, we'll come down to the application menu. Open that up. Under development, you've got QT5 designer. Education, you've got mathematics and science. Games, you've got Lutris and Steam installed out of the box. That is awesome. If you're a gamer and you're wanting to start learning how to game on Linux, this is a good distribution, especially with it being based on Gentoo. Graphics, you've got FontForge, GIMP, Gwynview, Ocular, Internet, you've got the Chromium web browser. You've got MailSpring as your default mail client. That's a good mail client no matter what distribution of Linux you're using. Multimedia, you've got K3B, Photon Audio, VLC Media Player, Office, you've got the LibreOffice Suite. System settings, system, manage printing, install system, info center. Let's look at info center. Okay, info center popped up. We're using KDE Plasma 5.22.5. QT version is 5.15.2. And then, of course, the kernel version is 5.14.10 Redcore. That's the most up to date kernel. So you're running on bleeding edge there. And then it recognizes my processors and the RAM that I've assigned it. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Back down here to utilities, ARC, KCALC, and then power on and off. And then the last but not least is system settings. You can come over into system settings. Let's move this over here. Go to appearance. And once it loads up right now, it tells you we're running on Breeze. You have the option of getting Breeze Dark, Breeze Twilight, or Oxygen. I want to go ahead and switch it to Dark. And there you see it switches over. Now, if you don't like any of these themes, you can always go down here to get new global themes. Go up here and go show highest rated. And then your highest rated ones will show up here. You can scroll down, choose the theme that you want. Once it's installed, close out, come over here, click on it, and apply. And you've got a brand new theme across your operating system. You can do that also with the application style, Plasma. The Plasma style, I love the way it looks. If you come down here, you see that you have no transparency. If you went with something like Oxygen, you could apply it. And you get that nice glassy look. And then you kind of got a highlighted look on your buttons over here. And then you can open this up. And it kind of gives you that nice dark. You got somewhat of a transparency back here. And then you get a decent look on everything. But that's up to you. You have total control over that. Colors, window decorations, fonts. I usually like to adjust my fonts. I'll just come over here and pick size. Scroll down to, let's make it 12. Switch it to 12. Click apply. And it'll change it across the operating system. And then you've got icons, cursors, font management, splash screen. Then you can go back and you pretty much have all of your typical normal Linux settings that you can change in here. Easy to customize, easy to make look the way you want to. Linux is hands down the best operating system out there today. So let's close out of that. But that's pretty much it. That's Red Core Linux based on Gen 2. If you've never messed around with Gen 2 or you've got questions about Gen 2, Zip on over to their website, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, take it for a test drive. And if you do, let me know in the comments below what you think. Do me a favor before you leave today, like, subscribe, or follow my channel. 
doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like this video and like what our channel's doing, you can support us by buying us a cup of coffee, or better yet, becoming a patron to the channel over on Patreon. Thank you for watching the video, and I will see you in the next video.